police from in the morning. High school seniors try to score on and off the field in this raunchy teen comedy set in the 1970s. I'm Corey. And I'm Paul. And we are the, the B-Movie, B-Movie Bros. Bros. Here are your B-Movies to the best of our ability. Sometimes we get off topic, but randomness is a gift. What you just heard was the Amazon description for the 1976 film The Pom Pom Girls. We were supposed to review Bloodsucking Freaks, but the DVD player and computer both decided that the disc was unworthy of watching, so... Here we are with the 1976 film, The Pom Pom Girls. Yeah, my computer literally rejected the film. It spit it out, and I've never seen it do that to any film before. And I've watched a lot of terrible films. So that just says a lot. Well, let's dive right into this shit with technical difficulties, our top and bottom three of the film. Let's start with the top. Number three. The movie doesn't have a coherent story. It's kind of just random scenes which kind of go together near the end and could really have been played in any order and you know would have made the same amount of sense number two the one kid has sex with his girlfriend goes to sneak out of the house and is caught at the fence by the father the father then invites the kid in for breakfast and is none the wiser to what happened and number one you know oh yeah by the way it's a new month it's may and it's sexploitation month here Getting on with the uh, with the movie here. Number one, before the big football game, there's a scene where all the cheerleaders are getting changed in the locker room. We get to see all of their boobies. It was pretty awesome. That That is the highlight of this movie for me. Oh, yeah. Number three, the football team that this movie revolves around was fucking terrible. I mean, there's a bunch of scrawny white dudes and two stoners. I mean, there's one giant black dude who I'm pretty sure was carrying the whole team, but let's say he got sick and couldn't make a game. I'm pretty sure I could beat all of them by myself. And I'm terrible at sports. Wait, football. Is that the one you throw the ball or the one with the sticks and the ice? Uh, I, I was confusing. It, I mean, it has to do with your feet, isn't it? The kinky uh, one? I thought that was croquet. Uh, no, 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 that's the hammer one. Ah, okay. I'd like to brush up on that. But still, I'm pretty sure I can kick all their asses. Number two. There is a decent amount of fight, fights in this movie. Um, and there was, some, there was a scene with a lot of boobs. So really, that was all I was asking for when I started this film. And number one. Like Corey said, there's a great scene where this guy breaks in this this um, family's house, fucks their daughter, and then the parents make him breakfast afterwards. Now, if that's not a fucking win, then I don't know what is. No pun intended. Well, let's move on to the bottom three now. And that is, you know, something that was really hard in this movie, just to narrow down to three. I could have gotten really nitpicky, but I digress. Number three. I was actually disappointed that this film was in color. I've had it on my watch list for Amazon for a very long time, and the still shot of it is in black and white. However, this film is never in black and white. It would have been so much classier that way. You know, it just, it it fucking boggles my mind. Why would you put a still shot, advertise the movie, as a black and white film? I mean, it never says black and white, but it implies it with the still shot. And it's not black and white. Why the fuck isn't the shot in color? Number two, this movie doesn't have a coherent story. It's kind of just random scenes which kind of go together near the end and could have been played in just about any order to make sense. Yes, it was on my top three, and it's part of the bottom. It makes the movie great and terrible at the same time. Number one, for a movie being about high schoolers trying to score, quote-unquote, on and off the field, not much scoring happens either on or off the field. During the big, big football game... All they do is fucking fight the other team. They don't even try to play the game. As far as scoring off the field, dude, one guy has sex with a waitress twice in the back of his van, and it's not even his girlfriend. He, you know, he doesn't do her until later in the movie. It just it, there's not much scoring in either place, on or off the field. Wait, that's not how football's played. No, no. Are, you're, you're are supposed you sure? To, you're supposed to do something with the ball. That's that's how rugby is played. Ah, uh, okay. Rugby's the fighting one. But yeah, yeah, not much scoring. All right, number three. This movie had no plot. It had drama and irrelevant shit happening, but no real plot. Number two. I couldn't really tell any of the characters apart from each other, at least the males from each other and the females from each other. 
and they were also one dimensional inter- and interchangeable. No one had any real personality outside of just being a teenager. And number one, there were hardly any boobs in this movie. Yeah, there was a scene in the locker room and a couple scenes of the waitress's boobs, but that was it. I was really kind of disappointed with that. We just keep saying the waitress, and all I can think about is is the plight of Charlie Kelly trying to see the waitress nude. I feel like this is a prequel to It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. <laughs> I mean, everybody else has had sex with the waitress, just, just not him. All right. We didn't mention much about the dialogue, so let's have ourselves a little bit of a quote war. Quote war. Um, we'll quote this movie back and forth. Uh, Paul, how about you start this week? All right. You're a goddamn turkey. You know that? You and I have a secret. You're a smartass, and I'm going to change that. Listen to me, you dumb, drunken bastard. You call me up like this again, and I swear I'll talk to the board about your pension. Let's get back to some quadratic equations. You don't have to prove you're crazy. We all believe you. Is that a crease down your face, or is that your asshole? And that ends this episode's edition of Quote Wars. If you have a favorite quote from this movie, I don't know why the fuck you would have watched this movie, but leave it in our comment section below or on our website, bmoviebros.com. I wish I was alive during the time period where calling a turkey was an actual insult. It seemed like a good time. I saw a bunch of turkeys on my way to work the other day. Goddamn turkeys. Yeah, son of a bitch. At least they weren't in the road. I think it's time to give this movie our final take. Remember, friends, our final take is a score on our shot scale. Our shot scale is a reverse scale, 1 to 10, 1 being the best, 10 being the worst. How many shots do you need to get through this film? I gave it a 7 out of 10. I was slightly nicer and gave it a 6 out of 10. Well, I have to say that from the description, The Pom Pom Girls is a sexploitation film, but it really doesn't give much in the way of sex. Sure, the movie opens with girls dancing in bikinis on the beach, one girl has sex in the back of a van twice, and there is a scene where all the cheerleaders go topless. That being said, the movie is otherwise filled with terrible dialogue, no acting skills, almost zero story, one protagonist who is easily the most dislikable character in the film, and a whole bunch of teens who were never taught about consequences. If a movie is going to advertise with hot young girls, then that better be the fucking focus. That is not the case here. High school is having rivalries in love life and in sports. Fuck this movie. If I want to see that, I'll watch a real high school sport movie like Vision Quest. Pom Pom Girls literally has no plot. It's just a group of teenagers doing teenager shit like driving cars and trying to fuck each other. Granted, if it had a plot, I'm sure the plot would have been stupid as all hell. There are some fight scenes which, while tame and bland, were at least kind of entertaining. And there are, of course, some boobs. This movie really didn't offer anything that you wouldn't find in any other teen drama. I could barely tell any of the characters apart because none of them had any personality whatsoever. I think one night, Freddy Krueger and Jason Voorhees decided to watch Pom Pom Girls and Grease and thought, man, these teenagers are obnoxious as fuck. We need to start killing these motherfuckers to save the world from all their whiny bullshit. So I want to say thank you to Freddy, Jason, Michael Myers, and all the other brief slashers for their service to my country. You are truly doing God's work. Amen, brother. Well... We know not everyone likes to watch the same kind of shit that we do. Sometimes we don't like to watch the kind of shit that we do. But anyway, we like to give every B-movie we review an A-movie companion, a movie of higher caliber and standard, and tell you why it's the exact same movie as this one. For me, I picked the 2000 film The Replacements. I picked Grease from 1978. I have to say, both The Replacements and The Pom Pom Girls did feature cheerleading tryouts. Both movies were supposedly about football. And in both films, there are cars that get wrecked by the opposing force, whether it be the other high school's team or the pro football players that are on strike getting back at the scrubs, taking their jobs. Took her jobs. I picked Grease because both movies are about high school students or, well, people in their 20s or 30s pretending to be high school students. Both movies focus around a group of guys and a group of girls and their relationship drama with the other group and don't really have plots outside of that. Both movies were made in the 70s. Pom Pom Girls was made in 1976 and Grease was made in 1978. The main male character of Pom Pom Girls, Jesse, kind of looks like John Travolta, who played the male lead in Grease. 
and I have no intention of watching either of these films ever again for the rest of my life. And that is why Grease is an A-movie version of Pom Pom Girls. So there you have it. If you want to see an A-movie version of this, check out The Replacements or Grease. I recommend Grease and The Replacements. They're both good movies. No. Well, I think it's time that we tell you how to drink away the flick. Drink away the flick. Come on and grab your drink. Let's drink away the flick. I'll give you some drinking games for this film, and so shall Paul. But remember, friends, drink responsibly. Number one, anytime there are shenanigans with a vehicle, take a drink. Number two, whenever they are in math class, take a drink. Number three, anytime people are on a beach, take a drink. Number four, whenever a fight happens, take a drink. And number five, of course, because it's sexploitation month, anytime you see something that is supposed to be arousing, take a drink. Every time an authority figure gets pissed off and just kind of grunt, grunts and everything, take a drink. Every time one of the kids commits a felony and gets away with it, take a drink. Every time someone hooks up with someone else, take a drink. And every time Dwayne tries to look tough and fails at it, take a drink. And those are your ways to drink away this flick. If you have any thoughts about this movie or anything else B-movie related, you can leave us a comment on either our YouTube or SoundCloud pages right below the video. You can also email us at bmoviebros at gmail.com. You can like us on Facebook at facebook-bmoviebros. Follow us on Twitter at bmoviebros. Or follow my personal Twitter handle be at bmoviepaul. Also check out our other reviews and shows. We have content um, about six days a week on our website bmoviebros.com. Well, seeing as how this is the only movie we've watched so far this month, it ranks at number one for this month. I don't think it's going to take a lot to uh, take this out of the top spot, though. God, I hope not. (laughs) So next week, we will be taking a look at the 1988 apocalyptic sexploitation epic, She-Wolves of the Wasteland. This is already starting out better. So there you have it, folks. Until next time, be brave, be alive, be back for more. Get on the next one. Fuck, see you, little guy.